Good morning everyone and welcome to this shop. Today we're going to be making the pook faster using brand new parts. So if you have a kid that's just starting to get into mechanical stuff or you're a child at heart yourself, uh, you should definitely pick up one of these old pook mopeds because they are cheap very easy to work on and will teach you the fundamentals of almost everything and also you can do stuff like this uh, which is buy brand new parts for them I, they still make stuff like there's a company that just came out with brand new engine cases for these you can buy every single part look for like a Puck Magnum or Free Spirit but it's the most popular model with the most parts availability but for these engines like this is a high compression head and this is an entire aerosol big bore kit and this is all going on my bike today I'm very excited about it did I mention this was only around hundred dollars for all this brand new so here we've got high compression head um, meant specifically for this aerosol kit I got all this stuff off Treatland, uh, and then here we have the cylinder itself with the piston in there and then we've got our intake and exhaust studs clips for the wrist pin the wrist pin itself and our intake, exhaust, base gasket, and head gasket. So it's just four nuts, and the head is off of here, um, and then four more nuts because the intake and exhaust have to come off, and we can take a look at what we're dealing with. Wow, there's a, those are kind of more aggressive fins. So cute. So now I just need to grab my needle nose and get these wrist pin clips out of here. And uh, yeah, there's a look at our old cylinder. Let's see here. What's the bore look like? Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, a little bit of vertical scoring, but I don't think that's anything that you can uh, you can feel. Uh, something I'm curious about. So these are the transfer ports. Uh, what do they look like on this new cylinder? They're fancy, is the answer. Fancy transfer ports. I don't know what any of this really means, but these air cell cylinders are very well regarded. This is uh, 65 cc, I believe. And of course, the high compression head. And let's see the difference in the combustion chamber. Yeah, so this has a way different shape. That's just a simple dome. This one has a chamfer and then a bowl and then a lip around the plug. Do I know what any of that means? No, but it is evocative. And then of course there's some ceiling surfaces we'll have to clean up here. Uh, wait, is the head gasket metal and the base? Yeah, the base gas. Yeah, the head gasket actually has compression happening, so it's metal. The base gasket is uh, just fiber because. It's not holding compression in, just fuel air mix. Isn't this fun? This took like 13 minutes and the bike is apart. It's wonderful. Hey, you guys wanna see something cute? It's so itty bitty. Look at that little guy. Let's see how, how does this compare to the new one? Yeah, that's a pretty significant difference. The bore, the bore is bigger. So now I get to fight, let's see here. This is down, so it's gonna go on like that. Uh, I need to finish cleaning off the gasket and then I get to fight um, the uh, wrist pin through this piston. And I don't know, do you do this with it still in the... I guess I can, because then uh, it can just be held in place by the studs. And it'll be all convenient and stuff. So I just gotta fight the wrist pin through there and put the clips in, which is gonna be a whole thing. Oh, look at this, the piston has a little nice little recess to make getting the clips out easy. How nice of them. The stock piston's not that nice. And I'm gonna lube all this up with some two-stroke oil, uh, you know, like an assembly lube type of situation and uh 
Yeah, so let me finish cleaning this gasket off. The heck? Piece of grass. Finish cleaning this gasket off with some Scotch Brite, and um, you won't really. I mean, there's no way I'm going to be able to show this on camera, but I'll get the wrist pin in there, and then I'll get back to you guys in a minute. That was actually quite a bit easier than I thought. Um, the old wrist pin came out fairly easily. The hardest part was getting these clips in. Uh, I just recognize, recommend needle nose pliers. Um, really, that's that's what I used. And I gave everything a generous. Oh yeah, I cleaned off the gasket surface. Gave everything a generous coating of uh, two-stroke oil as an assembly lube. And now, and now, look at that. So now, we've got our studs there. Stuff can start, oh, I guess I probably shouldn't forget the gaskets. Um, I'm gonna put the intake and exhaust on now. And then I'm gonna take off this uh, cover here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, mark top dead center on the flywheel since I have the piston exposed here and I can rotate everything easily. And then we can set the timing because the timing's gonna need to go from like 17 degrees before top dead center to around 14-ish. And then we'll rejet the carb, put the head on, torque down the nuts, and then it's good to go. Like this is maybe two hours, maybe two hours to do all this. It's about as simple as it gets. And the cool thing is, is that like you can put so many different cylinders on these. You can even buy new cases for these that have case induction instead of uh, cylinder induction, which means that this hole is in the case, but where the crank is, uh, which is how a lot of two strokes are. And then you can use stuff like Polinis with reed valves and all kinds of other stuff to actually get a lot of power out of these. I mean, there's racing series for these engines. Parts are everywhere. So, uh, give me a minute to clean some stuff up here. Uh, I'm gonna fight with the exhaust for a while. Uh, it's kind of choose your own adventure. You can do studs or you can do bolts. I'm gonna stick with the studs, cause reasons. Uh, so I'm gonna get that bolted up. I'm gonna get this bolted on. And then I will see you all when it's time to set the timing. Hey, guess what? The cylinder's off the bike now. Turns out that on this air cell, you've got to clearance a bit in order to fit aftermarket exhausts because they have slightly larger flanges. So if I zoom in, I got the Dremel out and just went to town on these three right here. Uh, and this was mostly on the rearward edge, but also a little bit on the uh, front side on the same three, but now the exhaust fits. So now I gotta take this to the parts cleaner and get all these shavings out of here because uh, that's not what pistons want to see. So I'm gonna go <laughs> take care of that and uh, hopefully I can just get the piston uh, back in there with my hands with these rings because I don't have like a piston ring compressor. I guess I have a hose clamp, I don't know. And um, my ears hurt. <laughs> that was stupid. We'll get this put back together, and I need to read up on jetting and uh, figure out how I'm going to jet this. <laughs> that was just a barrel full of fun. Uh, got all the metal shavings out, got everything put back together, took off the timing cover, and marked uh, top dead center here, and then put another mark here at uh, 15 millimeters before top dead center because that is the timing advance that you want for this. This is a 360 millimeter diameter um, flywheel. That's the word, which means that one millimeter equals one degree of timing. So uh, yeah, you just measure the millimeters and that's where you want it. So we'll get this back together and I'll get my timing light and uh, then we'll be able to set the timing on this guy. But first, I'm gonna put an 80 jet in this uh, bing here. Um, yeah, 80 jet in the bing, and go look up the torque spec. But let's just offer up the head here. Let's see here, which way is up? That looks right. And then we got our four Nuts with, uh, are these even lock washers? Just normal washers. Nuts with normal washers is the order of the day. And you know what? I forgot the dang head gasket. <laughs> so let's try that again. 
head gasket first. There we go. And now the head. Mmm. Mmm. That's quite a nice thing, actually. I am currently putting a 78 jet into my carb. And then I started torquing the head. It's like six foot pounds, I think. I don't have anything that goes that low, so I'm just kind of giving it good enough. Uh, but I'm going in a star pattern. Well, crossways diagonal pattern, I guess, since it's a square. And uh, just kind of trying to go by, yeah, well, my uh, ratchet's about 10 inches long, so if I push down with about eight pounds of force, you know, super precise. But my my uh, my torque wrench starts at like 20 foot pounds. What's funny is the amount of torque for the head nuts is the same as the completely cosmetic flywheel cover. I find that very amusing for some reason. At this point. I need to tighten up the exhaust, but then it's pretty much just uh, triple check myself on the torque for the head and uh, fire. Fire it up. Well, I'll put the spark plug in. I'll probably clean the spark plug first. Looks like it was running a bit uh, rich, and I attribute that to the fact that when I tuned this, it was about 40 degrees colder outside than it is now. Okay, just gonna rotate her a bit. Oh yeah, she's got good compression. Holy crap. All right, ignition on, fuel on. timing light. So he begins his journey. Oh yeah. Okay, I will see you around front. That was anticlimactic. sunset. That's our hero. Faster, but it's got no low end whatsoever. So, nitrous jetting will require some work, but that was a successful first test. It didn't blow up. 
I don't know what the break-in procedure is. I tried Googling it, and everyone was, like, in complete disagreement. Some people were like, take it gentle. Some people were like, rev it up and down a whole bunch. Some people were like, just ride it normally. So, I, I went with option C. But I'm gonna yank the plug out and probably play with some jetting. And, uh, put a bunch of miles on this and I'll check in with you. Tomorrow. Or two days from now. It is not going great. You'll notice the bike is apart again. Um, I, after going on a few rides, as you can see the mixture is pretty good. I fixed some vacuum leaks. Apparently the throttle cable can be a vacuum leak, so I got that all taken care of. Adjusted the jetting a bit, went down to I think a 70 or something like that. Um, consulted some uh, tables of other people who'd done this. But it still wasn't all that fast. It did like 33, which is not what I would expect going to a high comp head and, you know, upsizing 15 cc's. Um, then, after doing some more tuning, I went on a ride about four miles, you know, varying my uh, throttle inputs. And about halfway through, it felt a little down on power. Then I got back, shut it off, checked my head bolt torque and stuff, fired it back up, it made this awful clanking noise. And I took it apart and the piston uh, wrist pin is just seized. So now I'm trying to press it out, figure out what's going on. It gouged the crap out of the cylinder. So the fun part of this is uh, that totals the whole engine effectively because um, there's needle bearings. That, that should never seize. That's needle bearings in that uh, wrist pin uh, side of the rod. So if that's a problem, then the crank has to come out and be replaced in the rod, and the whole engine case has to be split. So basically every perishable item in this engine is going to need replacement. It's going to be like a couple hundred more dollars that I just don't have to throw into this bike right now. So I think it's beaten me, you know, plus replacing the piston and, and kit itself. So I'm going to keep trying. I've got ball joint press with a socket. Uh, to try and press the wrist pin out, and it is putting one heck of a fight up. <sighs> yeah, this is actually kind of the easiest that it's been during this, but uh, yeah, took the studs out so that they're not in my way, except for this one. Forgot about that one. So let me get this part, and I'll see what the postmortem is. I like how it fell into my exhaust. Ooh! Yeah, that, uh, that's gotten hot. Holy crap. I don't understand what happened here. I used plenty of assembly lube. I mean, this was kind of tight fitting in here, but it didn't seem unreasonable. It's needle bearings on the crank side, brass bushing on this side, so I might be able to replace, <sighs> replace this brass bushing. Oh, it's spun. Yeah, there's a hole in the brass bushing that I think is supposed to line up with a hole on, uh, on the end of the rod here. Crank feels fine though. That's all still good. some research. Thanks for watching.